What's up guys, Jeff Cavalier, AthleteX.com. Today I'm gonna to show you the best exercises for your biceps. And as we've been doing in this entire series, I'm gonna restrict my selections of these exercises to the use of just dumbbells. Now that doesn't mean that I have to sacrifice anything. As a matter of fact, as you're gonna see here in this video, guys, I'm gonna show you some superior selections, provided I get the opportunity to provide context to my selections. As we've been doing again all along here, we've been taking exercises that fit different purposes and categories. And we're gonna do the same thing here as well. I'm gonna show you the best options if you're training for power, for strength, for hypertrophy, with sort of an eccentric overload as your focus or your method, or a metabolic stress as your method of hypertrophy. We're gonna cover them both. I'm gonna show you a corrective exercise that you can do. I'm even gonna show you a total body exercise, and yes, they actually do exist when it comes to biceps. And then finally, that sort of miscellaneous category, we're gonna cover an exercise that hits not just the biceps, but more importantly, the muscle underneath the biceps, the brachialis, which is gonna to help to give you more width on your upper arm. But the fact is, guys, the selections are based on science, and the selections are based around that context, and most of all, you're gonna be armed with the best exercise selections no matter what purpose or goal you have in your training. So let's get started. All right, guys, so we kick it all off here with strength, and if you haven't already done so, you're definitely gonna wanna watch the chest edition in this series because the selection process of how we got to these strength exercises was very similar, and it's based on the lack of stability when we move from a fixed hand position on a barbell to separate hands controlling dumbbells. Now, how does that really play into this? Well, guys, again, if I had options here for a barbell, I'd go right to the barbell curls you see me doing here. Whether I'm using a straight bar or an easy bar, I love this variation of a curl. I think it allows us to add the most weight to the bar to get the most strength benefits. But I've also covered in great depth, many times on this channel, how much I like the weighted chin up. You can see me doing those here. I know that I can overload the biceps once again here because I have not only the additional weight around my waist, but I've got the weight of my own body that I'm using to overload those biceps. But that's not the name of the game, right? Because we're using just dumbbells here. So I have to make my selection. But what I do here is I use that same criteria as I did with the bench press moving to the dumbbell bench press. We know that 300 pound bench pressers don't automatically become 150 pound dumbbell bench pressers. And that is because the stability required at the shoulder becomes compromised and winds up undercutting your strength performance on the exercise. So the dumbbell variation is not always the best choice. And very similarly here in the case of the dumbbell curl, when I go to move that weight up, I have to be able to counteract that weight coming up. I have to be able to stabilize that with my core because of the posterior driven force of the dumbbells coming up and back require my core to be engaged to do that. So what happens is, if you are a 130 pound barbell curler, you may not be a 65 pound dumbbell curler for that very same reason, but you can do something different. You can lift just one dumbbell at a time. Because what we've done is we've just halved the requirements of our core for having to stabilize that much weight coming up and backwards, only 65 pounds at a time. You'll notice that you can maximize your strength using a dumbbell one at a time. Now, again, if I have my overall choice from athleticism, trying to integrate as many areas as possible, I would go with the double-handed version of this, the simultaneous curl. But we're looking for just strength here, guys, and that's what leads me in the direction of the unilateral curl but I'm not gonna abandon the weighted chin up. I don't have to, I have two winners here, guys. And the beauty about this exercise is I don't have to sacrifice the weight that I use. Instead of using place as my form of resistance, all I have to do is take, in this case, like I do here, wrap a dog leash around a single dumbbell, and then wrap it around my waist, jump up on that bar, and I'm good to go. And I haven't had to sacrifice the load that I've been using if I've been using place in its place. The fact is, guys, when we're looking for strength, Overload is the key, and these two exercises give you the best opportunity to do just that. All right, next up, guys, we move on to power. And what that should automatically trigger in your head by now is that if you want to develop power, you not only want to be able to move some weight, but you want to be able to move that weight rather quickly. You want to have a speed component or a velocity component to the weight that you're lifting. And when it comes to developing your biceps, there's one exercise that I still choose, and it's gonna look very similar to one we just covered, and that is the weighted plyometric chin. Now again, we don't have to weight it as heavy as we did before, because we know that velocity is still key. We need to be able to explode through the concentric portion of the rep. And not only that, as I covered in our chest edition as well, you wanna be able to find an exercise that optimally does not restrict you in terms of your ability to explode through that concentric. You don't wanna be slowing down dumbbells in the case of a dumbbell bench press, in order to come back down to the bottom and repeat the rep. You're actually decelerating at the moment you want to accelerate. Here, if you can get your body moving through the bar on a weighted chin, 
you're doing exactly what you need to do. Again, you don't have to use that much weight here. As a matter of fact, guys might find this so challenging that they use no weight at all. But guess what? The dumbbell still comes in handy because all you got to do, turn it on its end and use it as a stepping stool to get up to the bar and do these for body weight only. The fact is, guys, the plyo chin-up is one of the most explosive and best ways to train for power when you're trying to focus on your biceps. All right, moving on now to hypertrophy. We know that there's actually more than one way to skin a cat here, right? Progressive overload is an option, but we also understand if we have any training experience that we ultimately wind up drying up on that road, right? Because we know that we can't continually add weight to the exercises, even the great ones that we selected before. The fact is we need some more options, and that comes in the form of the eccentric overload, eccentric muscle damage. It's a great stimulator for protein synthesis. But what we do is we have to select the right exercise, and here dumbbells come in perfectly handy. We do the dumbbell incline curl. But we're not just doing a dumbbell incline curl because you've probably done a lot of them in your lifetime. The fact is we're really trying to accentuate the stretch on the biceps, the eccentric overload of the biceps to achieve what it is we're trying to achieve here. And we can do that in a better way by actively contracting the muscle on the opposite side of the elbow and the biceps, and that is the triceps. You can see me doing that at the bottom of every rep. It accentuates the strength of contraction that I'm going to get from the biceps to rebound from that bottom out position. And that's great, but we also know something else here. When I reach concentric failure, I'm not done because we know that our muscles are set up in such a way that eccentrically we are stronger than we are concentrically. So even when we reach concentric failure, we've got some more to go. And if you're trying to really build muscle, if you're trying to create hypertrophy, one of the best ways to do that is not just to take your exercises to failure, but through failure, and I can do that with this drop set. I sit up, I'm mechanically changing the position of my body to an upright position, I curl it to cheat it up, it's gonna be easier from this position, and then what I do is I just sink my body back to the bench, slowly lower my elbows back down again to accentuate that stretch once again, that eccentric contraction of the biceps. This is a great combination, guys. It just employs a couple additional techniques to the exercise you've probably already done that will amplify the results you see from this dramatically. Now let's continue that theme we just built on here because we're now focused on a metabolic stress, right? Reveling in the burn is what I say. When we get to the burn, that's when the exercise starts. We can do that here. We can utilize something called a mechanical drop set to keep that burn going long after we thought we'd have to quit. And we've probably seen this before, guys, as it appeared in our Soren 6 bicep workout. It is so damn effective. You will not perform this and not burn like hell by the time you're done, I promise you that. So what we do is we start in the incline position here. Right, we do our curls to failure. And then what we do is we just sit up. We don't have to drop the weight or change the weight. We simply sit up. By changing our position of the dumbbells relative to gravity, we've actually changed the strength curve a bit. Now we actually can complete a few more repetitions. And what we do is we take it to failure once again. Your biceps, trust me, will be burning like hell at this point. But again, this is where you test yourself. How far can I go with the burn? Now I can actually lean forward and perform a drag curl. The, the moment arm of the dumbbells is no longer so long away from my shoulder. Now I can get my elbows way back and keep those dumbbells in close, which is going to make the exercise easier. Now it's not going to be easy because it's third in line here and that burn has already been set in a long time ago, but it's still going to allow you to crank out a few more reps. And with the goal being to get every single rep you can with that burn firmly in place, this is such a great option for doing that. All right, so now it gets a little bit fun here because we're actually now going to cover a total body option for your biceps. Yeah, we're going to use dumbbells, and I promise you it's going to be more than just the single joint focused bicep exercises that you're probably used to. And that is, we do here a dumbbell underhand dead row. The exercise starts from the floor, it's ground based, it's covering multiple joints, it's demanding a synchronization of those joints from the ankles to the knees to the hips, right, even to the elbows and the shoulders. You can see as we wrap around here, it's obviously working the back as we go into the row portion of it. And as we come back around, there's no doubt the biceps are doing a heavy workload here, especially because of the supinated grip. Because guys, sometimes you're short on time. Sometimes you're just doing a pull workout. Sometimes you're looking for one of those big bang for your buck exercises. This is the one you want to select, and I promise you, your biceps are not going to sacrifice here. They're still going to benefit because this is a great exercise selection. Moving on now, guys, we go to one of my favorite areas of these videos, and that is the corrective exercise selection, because you can't ignore the correctives. Just because they seem to be the more rehab-based exercises, it doesn't make them less important. As a prehabilitative exercise selection, they're going to be super beneficial for you. But the fact is, when it comes to the elbow and the biceps, what are you really trying to focus on? And while we have the option to, again, target the shoulder because of its attachment up here, what I find more beneficial to those that are training their biceps is to target 
the strength of the forearms and the proper integration of the muscles in the forearms when you're doing your gripping and your bicep exercises. Why is that? I've covered in great detail before how the medial elbow starts to take a huge brunt of the load when you improperly load or grab a dumbbell or a barbell in your hand because you grab it too far down. And what winds up happening is it puts a whole hell of a lot of stress on the medial elbow and it makes it almost impossible for you to do bicep exercises. You might not even be able to do any pulling exercises at all. And that can't be. So what we do here is I actually have two choices. If you can't handle a heavy load, then what I would have you do is this wrist curl variation. This is the medial elbow wrist curl, right? Because that's what we're trying to focus on. And all you have to do is do a normal forearm wrist curl, but you have to grab the dumbbell deep in your hand, not distally in your fingers. Because the main root of that problem that's causing all this overload here at the medial elbow is this overload of these distal finger tendons. When the dumbbell is held too far out in the fingers, it creates a whole hell of a lot of stress on a tendon that's way too weak to handle that. So what you want to do is slide that dumbbell back into the palm of your hand, grip there, and then perform the repetitions. But then we can do something even better. We can actually take the load and make it substantially heavier, which is going to have a probably better carryover, especially as you go back to your strength exercises, and that is to do this variation of a carry. And again, what you're trying to do is not just walk around the gym with as heavy as dumbbells as you possibly can hold until they drop out of your hands. Instead, you want to grip that dumbbell deep in your hand. You want to work on that forearm strength in the proper position without letting it start to fall. And as you'll see here, guys, when I get around the gym, if I'm fatiguing and I have to put the dumbbells down, so be it. Remember, this is a corrective exercise. What I don't want to happen is this. I don't want to be walking and have the dumbbell start drifting down into those distal fingers because that's what's going to create that stress and load on the inner elbow that you're not going to like. But either one of these things, guys, depending upon which one you can load heavier, are going to be great options and things you want to definitely integrate and not overlook because overall, they're going to help you with the longevity of your bicep training. All right, and then finally, guys, we save this miscellaneous category to address an exercise that doesn't necessarily fit into any of the others. And in this case, we're actually going to target a different muscle, but it's no less important, and that is the brachialis. Because of it being situated underneath the bicep and contributing not only to the overall upper arm size, but more importantly, the width of the arm, we know there's something we can do, and especially with dumbbells, to target this area better, and that is the cross-body hammer curl done with a pronated forearm. Why? Because we know one of the functions of the bicep is to supinate the forearm. Well, we know that we can take some of that away by pronating the forearm. And if we pronate the forearm and let it ride up our body, we're going to get more of the activation of the brachialis or the brachioradialis that runs down here in the forearm. But if we want to shift it a little bit higher into that brachialis, research has shown that there's a rate dependency on how fast you move through the concentric portion of the lift. When you go slower, the brachialis has more activation. It's more likely to contribute to the concentric portion of that lift. Of course, you still want to load this as heavy as you can to try to get more of that size and development, but don't allow the load to start allowing you to swing the weight up because you're going to defeat the purpose of what we're trying to do here. So there you have it, guys. My best exercise selections for your biceps, regardless of whatever goal it is that you're training for. The fact is, you don't have to make sacrifices in the results that you want to see from your training just because you might have to make some sacrifices in the equipment that you have at your disposal. Guys, I will take you step by step through any workout and help you get the most out of it. We call it putting the science back in strength. I do that in all of my programs. They're all available for you over at athletics.com. In the meantime, if you like this video, leave your comments and thumbs up below. Let me know what else I'm going to cover. I'll do my best to do that for you. And if you haven't already done so, guys, make sure you click subscribe and turn on your notifications so you never miss any of the videos that we put out, not only in this series, but all the videos we put up on this channel for you guys. Again, I say it all the time. I make these videos for you, and I really appreciate you guys watching. All right, guys, I'll be back here again soon in just a couple days.